And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. Act three, bunny. You okay? I hate this movie. I hate this movie so much. Yes. It's it's hard for me to express happiness right now. <laughs> Especially having having seen that trailer, having seen that fucking trailer, having yes. to see that again. It just it hurts. Funny, it hurts. Okay, but I'm a professional. All right. Um, uh, okay. <clears throat> also, my wife just got me a little bit high, so that helped. Okay. <sighs> Act three, bunny! Act three. <laughs> Act three. Sorry, I like that. Yes, <laughs> bunny, my friend. It is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film podcast to spliff our way into the third and final act of the show, and it is said third act wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing our low-cost, high-in-fiber, and now available without a prescription movie of the week. And this week, we finally end our summer of suffering with the 2018 film, with finger quotes, called Disaster Movie. Number one on the IMDb bottom 100 list of the 100 worst movies of all time. This is the worst. Um, it's very homophobic and very transphobic and very sexist. And it's basically Edgelord the movie. It's basically Reddit... It troll the movie. Okay. You know, like, okay. So first off, an explanation. We do themed summers, and we've done the summer of Star Wars and the summer of Saw and the summer of Fred Willard because he had died right before the summer, and so we just watched his movies. This summer, we are doing a deep dive into the IMDb bottom 100 list of the 100 movies of all time. This is the last week of August. This is the last episode that we will be doing during the summer. This is the end of our summer of pain. Bunny, fuck this movie. <laughs> fuck this shitty fucking movie even if i was nine or well i would still hate this movie. this horrible fucking dumbass lowest common denominator fucking shitty ass movie it hurts my brain what it reminded me of what the movie reminded me of was freddy got fingered the tom green movie because like the Tom Green movie, Freddy Got Fingered, this movie is not only making fun of all of these popular things that happened in 2007 and 2008. It's also making fun of you for spending money to watch this shitty fucking movie. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I... I I had become fascinated after a while how unfunny I felt it was when they were trying so hard to be funny that it like reminded me of the psychics from the National Enquirer who are yeah. who are more incorrect than if by chance yeah. You know, it's like it's like somebody could be accidentally funny more frequently than what is going on in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. And like what a tight tight time frame 
to lock yourself into to try to do parody? Well, guess what? It wasn't that good of a movie fucking year. The great thing, the, the incredible thing is, the thing that just drives me fucking insane about this movie and the other movies that they did, because they made numerous movie movies. But we'll get into that later. But so the filmmakers, in order to keep their film fresh, they would base the scripts, large portions of the script, not on the movies, but on the trailers for the movies. Okay. So when they made this film, Juno hadn't come out. They just thought it would be a big film and wrote the Juno character based solely on like a three-minute fucking preview. Yeah. And that drives me insane. So I would like to read this review. I was going to save it for the end, but I'm going to read it now. Nathan Rabin is a great fucking critic and also an author. He used to write for the Onion AV Club, and now he has his own website, and, and he's, he's really amazing. So he wrote a review for this film, Disaster Movie, and I love it very much. So this is his review, and I quote, Spoof movies, as practiced by the cultural blight that is Seltzer Friedberg, that's the two people who made this movie, um, aren't just troubling from an aesthetic viewpoint. They're horrifying from a moral standpoint as well. The parody of the Zucker Brothers and Mel Brooks is defined by love, knowledge, and appreciation. The Zucker Brothers and Mel Brooks love, know, and appreciate the source material they're spoofing enough to get all the details perfect. The yes. comedy of Seltzer Friedberg, in sharp contrast, is defined by contempt. Contempt for the attention span, intelligence, maturity, and frame of reference for the audience, and an even more raging contempt for the source material they're spoofing. Friedberg and Seltzer aren't writers, they're comic terrorists. <laughs> oh, man. I, I love this so much. They're comic terrorists who cavalierly destroy what others create for their own ugly self-interest. Their success is entirely dependent on making comedy a dumber, crasser, less dignified place. End of quote. <laughs> and I agree with that. There's And there's this, was, this was who again there, Mom? Uh... <laughs> no, this is just a random film critic from the Onion AV Club. And I think he nailed it. Because this is the thing. There's parody where you take something and then add something to it. And then there's just stealing shit. And there's a thin line there. And I feel that what these guys are doing is that like, they made a movie called The Starving Games, and so they're ripping off The Hunger Games. We're, we're going to rip off The Hunger Games. Hey, you can't do that. That's illegal. And then they just hide behind fair use laws. And like, this is a spoof. Ha ha. Okay, now let's make our movie featuring all these characters that we can make do whatever we want. And it's, yeah. it's just... It's not even that... It's not even funny. It's just sad. It made me sad. It hurt to watch. I don't... I hate this film. And here's my biggest fear. He was, here's my biggest fear. These guys... Uh, uh, Friedberg... And, and Seltzer... Who yeah. wrote and directed this film... They have five other movies on the list. Yeah. Think about that. These guys made six of the movies on the IMDb Bottom 100, and my biggest fear was we'd have to watch more than one. Oh. And I was just really? like, I was just like, for the love of God, maybe we just have to watch disaster movies. So that's one positive. We only had to watch disaster movie. But my fear was 
we would have to watch all of them. I don't think I would have been able to get through the summer if we had to watch more than one movie from these guys. Yeah. That would have broken me. So, buddy, how much... What did you love about this film? What did I love about this? Man, it just, like, felt so wrong to me. Like, like, really, you're parrying Juno? You're making a super bad reference? How? You know, like... How did Ike... How did actor-comedian Ike Baron Holtz go from... How did how did actor and comedian Ike Bear Barnholtz go from disaster movie to being in Suicide Squad? Not the Suicide Squad, the first one. He yeah. was the he was he was the like Arkham guard that the Joker like made part of his crew. Yeah. And it's like, really? You hired this guy who was 12 characters in Disaster Movie? What the fuck is wrong with you? How do you go from this film to Suicide Squad? It makes no sense to me. But yeah. fucking... I can think of one... I can think of one positive about this movie. Uh, and I'm really proud of this. Uh... It killed Kim Kardashian's acting career. Thank That's a God. Because this was her first movie, and I'm pretty sure her last movie. So it I literally, that. now wait here, I literally had to look up on IMDb to find out if that was Kim Kardashian or somebody mocking Kim Kardashian. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Because this, this movie was made in 2007 and released in 2008. So it was before Kim Kardashian became the Kim Kardashian. For all I know, she was only known as the sex tape chick in this movie. Yeah. You know? I, I, I just don't think that, like, movies like Juno or Superbad or No Country for Old Men are, like, rife for parody to begin yeah. with. And, yeah. like, second, it wasn't even parody. It would just be <laughs> like, oh, look, they, they're dressed up like super bad. They're, oh, there's McLovin. Oh, this is the scene where they're stealing the alcohol. Yeah. You know, That's like, not parody. Like, you're just, it's you're kind just of almost sort of cute. But... That was it. Like, just people from other movies would just walk on. Uh, I'm just going to yeah. say one thing. You guys took this way too serious. Way, 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 way too serious. Lighten the fuck up. <laughs> and I'm going to walk away. <laughs> I'm not going to say <laughs> any of the things that just popped into my head. What? I said, I'm not going to say any of the things that just popped into my head. Okay. I'm just going to keep, I'm just going to move on. Okay, so here's a little background, okay? So there were these two guys, Jason Friedberg and Aaron Seltzer. They were film students at UCLA. They met and hit it off and decided to work together. They met while both taking a class about the films of Martin Scorsese. So one thing that we can say about the team of Friedberg and Seltzer, they're obviously horrible fucking students who didn't pay attention to the Scorsese class. <laughs> For fuck's sake. So they teamed up. Friedberg and Seltzer and decided to write scripts together. They sold about 40 scripts and only one came to fruition and it was a Jean-Claude Van Damme film that I don't think anyone remembers, Maximum Risk. Came out in 1996. Um, their first early success 
was they were hired to make an educational video called Bad Golf Made Easier with Leslie Nielsen. Apparently, okay. apparently Leslie Nielsen was get it, was really hot from the Naked Gun movies and decided to uh, create a tongue-in-cheek educational golf video. Well, and they he, hired... He, he, he decided to dwarf some direct-to-home merchandise... Yes, yeah. To cash he in on. It, basically. Huh? Yeah, so he dwarfed it. He dwarfed it. It's like uh it's like uh Mike my, my, uh Michael Bolton's softball made easier. Yeah, or That's or that callback. Victor Borgia thing. Yes. Man, fucking I loved his thing where he was reading. I love Victor Borga's routine where he's reading a letter and he's pronouncing all the, the punctuation. I fucking love that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so they're doing a Leslie Nielsen direct to home video little thing. And they meet Leslie Nielsen's son. And Leslie Nielsen's son is like, oh, gee, you guys are in the movie business? Well, that's neato nifty. What are you guys working on? And Friedberg and Seltzer said, well, here's something you'll like. We came up with a spy spoof script. Do you want to read it? You bet. So he reads the script. He likes it. He passes it to Leslie Nielsen. And that was the movie Spy Hard. Okay. It's a, po- it's a spy parody from 1996. Starring Leslie Nielsen as a James Bond type. And the movie is dumb. And it's pretty shitty. But the opening credits are the best opening credits in the history of opening credits. Really? Okay. It's the only good part. Yes, yes, yes. Because it's a spy parody. So when the credits come up, you got to have the trippy uh, shadows of people and guns slowly floating past the screen while your James Bond type theme music plays, yeah. and they got Weird Al Yankovic to do it. And nice. it's so good to see Weird Al Yankovic, who appears, singing the theme to Spy Hard, and it's a great scene in a horrible fucking movie. But Boy. I really do suggest that if you haven't seen the movie Spy Hard, uh, go on YouTube and search Spy Hard opening credits. They're fucking wonderful. Uh, Weird Al Yankovic does, does a James Bond theme. It's fucking wonderful. So that was their first big hit. After that, Friedberg and Seltzer sold a Liberace script that didn't get made, but it did introduce them to a producer who sold a script of theirs to Dimension Pictures, the script was a horror spoof that was titled Scream If You Know What I Did Last Halloween. And that this script was purchased familiar. by the... Yes, because uh, the Wayans brothers uh, bought the script from Dimension, rewrote it, and turned it into Scary Movie. Yeah. So... Uh, I wouldn't say Friedberg and Seltzer wrote Scary Movie. Friedberg and Seltzer were the original writers of Scary Movie. And then it was rewritten by the Wayans Brothers and their team. A total of like six people ended up attaching their names to the script of Scary Movie. But they were the first name. Anywho, Scary Movie was a hit. And now suddenly there's buzz around Friedberg and Seltzer. So what do they do? They do the most Hollywood thing imaginable more of the same so they released in order date movie in 2006 a romantic comedy parody with that was primarily a romantic comedy film with some pop culture elements in the film at the end of the movie it ends with the couple has gotten together and they're in love and they decide to go on a vacation to Skull Island where Carmen Electra gets eaten by King Kong. What? Okay. You got Carmen Electra? How did you do that? 
Carmen Electra never appears in anything unless there's a paycheck and cocaine. Yeah. So, uh, fun fact, Date Movie is currently number 28 on the IMDb Bottom 100. So they followed up Date Movie the next year, because they're really cranking these out, they followed it up with Epic Movie, uh, which is less one specific parody and more of an annoying, hyperactive, badly written parody of every movie that was popular at the time. That one was number thir- is number 13 on the IMDb Bottom 100. And then the next year, in 2008, they overextended themselves, and this is <coughs> what killed their career. They decided in 2008 to release two parody movies in the same freaking year. Why would you do this? You're not Marvel. Yeah. So in, so in the beginning of 2008, Meet the Spartans came out, which used a singular parody of 300 to spoof a bunch of other movies. Meet the Spartans is currently number 25 on the IMDb bottom 100. In fact, the team of Friedberg and Seltzer have a total of six movies on the IMDb Bottom 100, including this week's movie, released the same year as Meet the Spartans. As so, so way to oversaturate the market, guys. And, and this fourth movie of theirs, Disaster Movie, is currently the number one worst film on IMDb's Bottom 100. And funny, here is the million dollar question. Is this the worst? I still gotta give it to Swept Away. I fucking hated that movie. I would give Disaster Movie the worst, but like maybe Swept Away would be number two or number three on the list. Like it's really fucking bad. Yeah. It's not, not just bad, but it's offensively bad. <clears throat> but this would be right up there. So yeah. Got the hub bring around. Yeah. So, Friedberg and Seltzer made six brainless, uh, shitty movie parodies between 2006 and 2013, not including the scary movies, which I guess they did have a hand in creating, but I wouldn't call that, that their film. Um, fun fact, no, Friedberg like and Seltzer those. keep... Yeah, yeah. I like the first one. I didn't like the second one as much, and I never saw any of the other ones. But well, I the second one that... is kind of the Legend of Hell House, and I, so I kind of like that. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Uh, fun fact about Friedberg and Seltzer: their last parody movie was in 2013, but they keep threatening to make more. Yeah. They 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 announced that they were going to be working on a. Taken parody called Where the Bleep is My Kid and then they announced that that they were also working on a Star Wars parody called you know just like Shriek if you scream if you know what I did last Halloween the Star Wars movie was going to be called like the Force Awakened, The Last Jedi, who went solo with in a rogue way. I don't remember. I didn't write it down, but it sounded shit. Thankfully, I don't think any of those movies are going to be made, but they're still, they're still making movies. They're just not making the annoying-ass movie parodies that they used to make, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> The, the, here's the sad part about all of these horrible fucking parody movies. Most of them did good at the box office. Yeah. Epic movie cost $20 million to make and made $86 million, which is why they keep cranking out this shit. The only good thing about this movie is that, number one, it bombed. That's, it, so this sort of uh, spelt the, the end for the parody movies. And also, let's not forget, this movie killed Kim Kardashian's acting career. So thank fucking God. (laughs) So, I, it just upsets me that people still keep going to the well of 
Ed Wood and Plan 9 from Outer Space when there are so many movies here on the IMDb Bottom 100 that are so much worse than what everyone calls the worst movie of all time. Yes. That deeply upsets me. That people still go to Plan 9 from Outer Space as their go-to for worst movie of all time. It's like, did you even see the Cylons? <laughs> the, the Cyclones, whatever they were fucking called? Yeah. It's like, wow, somebody didn't see Slenderman the movie. So, I wouldn't call Friedberg and Seltzer the worst director of all time, but I would say the worst filmmaking duo. Yeah. Of all time. I hate this movie. I, oh my goodness! You made fun of Dr. Phil? No one's ever done that before! Exactly. <clears throat> or like, or like, okay, there's Kung Fu Panda. Yeah. You know, like, Oh, okay. I, you know, like, like, there's nothing, I, I don't find anything funny about that. I feel like this entire movie is not like Batman comes out and does something funny. It's just Batman comes out. Yeah. Well, I don't think, I, I think large portions of this film isn't parody. It's just, you're just taking a lot of these characters and just putting them in the movie and you're not parodying them. No. This movie upsets me. This whole summer has upset me <laughs> and I'm just, I'm really happy that this is the end. This I just, is the end. We made it. We survived. We went where others do not dare we this risked life and has... limb for our listeners and our audience and our sanity and our integrity and our credit score. But we made it. We made it, motherfucker. We are through this has been a difficult the crucible. This has been a very difficult summer. And now we're done. And so this is what we're doing. We're done with the summer. So we're so. Do you think you'll miss it, Bunny? The summer of bottoming that we did. No. Yeah, I don't think so either. I'm so. I'm hoping over time my mind will erase any memory of this period of my life. Yeah. Yeah. Completely. Yeah, this will all just be a, a, a hazy shade of winter. So okay, so we're done with the summer, and then... I am hoping in a month, if you say. Hey, you remember the summer of bottoming? I'll be like, I don't know what you mean. Yeah. So, we're done with our summer. It sucked. So, we're going to be off next week. There won't be a show next week. But then after that, we're coming back. And I just want to... I don't know what we're going to be doing, but we're just going to... Uh, Bunny will be taking over the podcast soon with his films, which is always fun in uh, end of September and throughout October to just be led somewhere by Bunny. And so really excited to have Bunny take over. But in the space between now and Bunny taking over, I just want to watch some things that are fun. So the next episode, which will be in two weeks, will be... Uh, James Gunn's The Suicide Squad. It's just fun. And it's good. And it's not Slender Man. And it's not Friedberg and Seltzer. And it it's not Yui Bull. Yes. So, yeah. And then I don't know what we'll do after that. Maybe I'll put a bunch of movies in a poll and have people vote on it. I don't know. But... Uh, hopefully just some positive vibes, man. This has been difficult. This has been a difficult summer. Yes, it has. But I'm happy that we are leaving it. Wow, the edibles have kicked in. What's this? Yeah, edibles, good. The edibles right now are clashing with all of the smoke that Natasha blew in my face and just creating a beautiful 
beautiful, beautiful feeling. Nice. <sighs> this. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, so yeah. So we're off next week, but the week after that, we'll be doing the Suicide Squad. And also, we'll be talking about violent cops. I might have a, a play for us to do. Okay. Seems like we haven't done that in a while. Uh, so I might be sending you a script. But I'm really excited about the next episode of the podcast. But now that I'm looking back at this week, oh, man, the highs and the lows. Judith Love Cohen, Jack Black, the Delta variant, Juno, uh, the Night House. Starring Rebecca Hall, which I, I cannot recommend more than I already have. I gotta say, I think this has been a pretty good episode of a podcast. I think this has been a damn good episode. Okay, good. I, I, I wanted to say that, but I didn't want to, you know, you're the person who makes that distinction, not me. I didn't want to step on your toes, but yes. I concur with your assessment, good sir. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve, and on behalf of Natasha and Bella and Eleanor and Maxwell and everybody else here in this house, I just want to say thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens. And you do schwaffles. And you cheese people. And you donuts. And you donuts. There you go. Do 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 do